Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome to yet another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. In our previous videos, we saw how to create the web services, the REST API testing using NeoLoad and Load Runner. So in those videos, we saw about creating the API services or creating the API REST services setup for the API services using Load Runner and NeoLoad. So today we are going to see how to do the API testing, the REST API testing in JMeter. So let's see today. The agenda of the video is to create a GET request and we'll see how to parameterize it. So that is going to be the agenda. So we'll complete it real quick. So before we dive into the video, I request you to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet please like if you like the video and share it with your friends okay so let's now move to the steps the first step of this video is going to be creating the get request for the api service for, for the i mean the api request get service request we are going to create so for that we will need a test plan and under the test plan, we will need to add a thread. There's the users. And inside the thread, we will need to add the thread group. So we have added a thread group. So that thread group contains one user with a ramp up period of one second. And it will execute for one time, which is one loop. So inside the thread group, we will have to add a sampler. And the sampler is going to be HTTP request since the API travels through the HTTP protocol. So now we have created a HTTP request. We have added HTTP request. So now we'll get the get request that we are going to add in our script. So here we have our first get request. And under this, we have the HTTPS, which is going to be the secured protocol way or the secured way that we're going to execute the script. And then we have the gores.co.in and public API and users is going to be 1589. So we're going to get the detail of this 1589 user. So can we copy paste the same URL into the load, uh, the JMeter? So will that work out? No, since we have other tools, the near load and load runner, once, I mean, if we just copy paste the URL, it will automatically configure the request, the protocol, the security type, and the, and all the other configuration details. But with near, with load runner, with, sorry, with JMeter, we need to configure them separately. So let's see how to break it. So let's go to the tool now. So in the tool, We'll first need to fill the protocol. So the protocol is HTTPS. So let's give the protocol here. The protocol is HTTPS. And then the server name or the IP. So for the server name or IP, we need to identify what is the server name. And that ends with either .in or .com. Or if you are testing any of the client REST services, that ends with .net. So that is going to be or that is going to be the server name. So the values that comes after the HTTPS and double slash and that ends as dot in or dot com or dot net. So that comes as the server name or IP. So just copy that and paste it here. And for now, we don't need to enter any port number. So let's now go to the HTTP request. So we have various are different types of HTTP request. We have discussed all of these in one of our previous videos. What is a get request and what, are, what does it do? What is a post? What is a trace or delete or batch? Batch. So now we are going to create the get request. So the HTTP request, let us keep it as get. And the remaining is going to be the path. So anything that comes after the in or .com or .net, we will need to select them and make sure we don't leave any space on the front or on the starting because in case if we give any space so that might end up in an error i will even show you that so for now we have configured the get request so we have given the protocol 
we have given the server name we have given the http request as get and then the path so now let's run the request and before that we need to add a listener to it so let's add a listener so the listener is going to be view results tree so this will tell us what is the result of the http request and then let's add a view results table as well under listener so this comes under the listener let's add a view results in table so this will tell us the response times how much time does it take and what time does it start all those details so now we have a request let's run one single request and see how does it perform so we have started the request and it has completed execution so this is the sampler request and here is the request that we have sent so if you see here this is exactly the same thing that we have used for creation so https go rest dot co dot in public api so this is going to be the same request and we have broken into three or four different parts and we have configured that in the jmeter tool and this is the request request headers and then the response data so this is what was expected as the response so now we have created configured and executed the script as well and these are the response tables whatever we expected so let's now so before that i want to make sure some of the best practices that is do not allow any space so here i have given a space here a small space so let let me run and show you what happen what will happen if we give any unwanted space so automatically that request will get failed because if you see here you can see that percentage 20 so if there is any space you can see this percentage 20 as the delimiter there or as the value here so in case if you find this percentage 20 please make sure to check whether you leave any unwanted space in the request section or in the path section so let's now some run some uh, 10 threads and see what is going to be the response times and other metrics so i'm running a request so here we can see 10 requests that have been executed and here we could see how does it work so with that we have created a request that comes as part of the url so now let's create another request where we can add a value in the parameter part so for that so this is going to be the part two it is creating a get request with a parameter that is passing the value as a parameter so i'm creating thread group adding a sampler which is another http request so as we did earlier so we'll need to divide this so i'm taking this https as the protocol and then the server name yes you are right so whatever that comes till the dot com or dot in or dot net is going to be the server name and please avoid any slash any forward slash and then what comes after that dot com is going to be the value till the book so whatever that comes so even even we can actually try with this so we'll give there as a path here so here we can see that i am passing this value in the url and let's see how does it work so whatever that comes after the slash i'm pasting is as the path here and let me add the listeners the view results tree and let's run this request and see how does it work so i'm running the request so i think we might get 10 times that's okay not a problem so here we can see the response data so this is the response data for the book or for the value that we have requested so in case if we want to pass this as a parameter inside the script so what we have to do is inside the parameter click add and we'll get a new row so under this we can enter the name of the value that we want to enter and then 
the value that we want to pass as a parameter. So you can paste it here and we will remove these values from the URL. So now we are passing this ISBN value as a parameter. So let's now run another request one more time and see how does it work. So I'll run it one more time. And that particular request has also got passed. And when we go to the request, we can see here when we move this, even when we move this ISBN is equal to with a number, automatically the question mark will get added to the request, even though we have removed it here. So that is how the HTTP request, the get request works. So these are the requests we have passed all these values in the URL. And this is the request we have passed as a parameter. So that's the difference. And please remember to make these configurations in the correct manner. So the part section now, part two section, the section two now. So let us now create a parameter and see how does it work. So to add a parameter, we'll need to add a processor here. So what kind of processor is that? That is going to be the CSV processor where we hold the value. So to create that, we'll need to go to config element and we'll need to select the CSV dataset config. So once we select the CSV dataset config, we'll need to bring the file. So whatever the file that we have created. So I have already created a file for this part. And as a part of best practice, please remember to create a separate folder for any of our project that we do. So this is the JMX file that is the file that we are creating, the, the JMeter file, and then the test data folder. So make sure we create a test data folder, a separate folder, so that they don't get mixed whenever we want to transfer the scripts to another machine. So just right click on the test data and I'm opening the file. So I have got the values here and then the file encoding part, the second one. So I'm not encoding anything. So I'm just leaving it as blank and then the variable name. So since I'm passing the user detail as the variable, I'm giving it as a user and I'm ignoring, I'm not ignoring the first line since the first line does not have any of the header or any of the uh, title or topic. So in case if we are adding it, we'll need to make it as true. But now since I'm not adding, I'm keeping it as false and it's just one value but still I keep it as the delimiter and then recycle on end of file. Yeah, I make sure it is true since if I want to run more and more, more number of iterations and stop thread on end of file, I'm keeping it as false. They don't want to stop the thread. And then the sharing mode, I have kept it as all threads. So now we are set up, we are done with the configuration file setup, the CSV data set. So let's now go to the script and here we will need to replace it so let's copy the name here. So right click, copy, and then under the HTTP request, let's select the name that we want to replace. So a dollar symbol, open floor bracket, and I'm pasting the parameter name, closing the bracket again. And now let's run one thread, that is one user with 10 threads. Let me clear this area. So now we are ready to do the test with the new values that we replace. So here we can see the values are getting replaced. So the, for the first user, it is 1580. For the second user, it's 1581. And then it is 1582. So the same way it is getting replaced for every user that we are using. So with that, we come to an end. So, so far we have seen how to create a get request using JMeter. And we also see how to replace or we have to replace the value with the parameter, with the new parameter that we wanted to test. And then we have also created another get request where we have passed the value as a part of a param as a part of the URL. And also we have even added that as a parameter and tried that as well. So that also works fine. So with that, we are coming to an end. So I hope 
I, and I believe that you like you like this video and it will be very useful for you. So if you really like it, please do subscribe, like and comment if you have any doubts or any queries. Thank you so much. We'll meet in another interesting video. Thank you. Bye-bye.